In this module, we'll check for air entering a brine system and how to tighten or replace a damaged fitting or hose. Symptoms of air in a brine system include low to no salt usage, hard service water, visible leaks, or water hammering during a regeneration. We're using the FLEC 5800 as an example. At the end of this module, we'll identify the individual components of the valve you selected. The injection system that is on a softener works on the principle of vacuum. We need to make sure that we pull our salt and water solution out of the brine tank and bring it into the valve. In order for that to work, all connections need to be airtight. On our 5800 valve, those connections are located on the side between this tube, the flare nut, and the connector for our brine line flow control. We have removed those from the valve in order to make it easier to view. There are four components. We have our hose, the nut, the connector that is inside the nut, and the end O-ring. This O-ring seals between the brine line flow control and the body. If there is damage to this O-ring, it will not seal properly. Any damage requires replacement of the O-ring. Make sure to use silicone lubricant when placing on a new O-ring or reinstalling this component. We can then look to the hose to make sure there is no damage to it. If the end shows scoring, we can loosen the nut, remove the tube flare, and trim the hose. We round off the hose, place our connector back in, and reconnect. Make sure to snug with a wrench to keep all connections airtight. As we move away from the valve connections, we need to continue to check our hose. Multiple connection points will show scoring in the hose. This is an opportunity for air to come into the system. We would want to trim this piece back and get to a clean piece of hose. When we trim, we want to make sure we have a nice square cut. Damage to the ends or cuts that are on an angle will not allow for the seals inside the fitting to be secure. We then want to check the hose. If it has been put underneath the brine tank or any other components, it can crush. Since we are working on a vacuum system, this would make it a challenge for the salt water to come through. We would want to shorten this or replace this hose. We then follow the tube into the brine tank and find our way into the valve assembly. Inside the tube assembly, we can follow our hose and find our connection points. These connections are normally done with plastic fittings to make sure that there is no corrosion from the salt that is in the tank. As we remove this hose, we again check to make sure that there is no scoring in the ends of the hose. This style fitting uses a nut and two seals. If there is damage to any of the seals or the nut, we would want to replace them. If there is damage to the hose or any scoring, we would remove the brass insert, trim the hose back, round off the edges, and replace the brass ferrule. Continuing down our assembly, we see we have another of the same style nut. This assembly is our air check assembly. This also needs to be secure. We also want to make sure that at the bottom of the unit, we check any glue fittings to make sure that they are secure to the tube. Internal to this second tube, there is a check ball. We want to make sure that as we fill salt water and bring it back out, we do not allow any air into the system. This makes sure that that check ball does not allow air. Any damage to these components or air getting into the system will cause our symptoms that we spoke of earlier. This connection on the tube removes in the same way and internal to it we have the same double seal components. This style unit uses a quick connect which allows us to remove 
this fitting on the top of the unit. Pulling straight up, we remove the clip. Once the clip is removed, we can move to the fitting and pull straight up. This fitting also has an O-ring. We would want to inspect it to make sure that there are no cuts or damage to it. On reassembly, we would want to add silicone lubricant. We press straight down and press the clip back in. We can reconnect all of our hose fittings, making sure that we snug up the connections as necessary with a wrench. On the Flex 7000 valve, we rotate to the side and follow the hose into the valve. This connection is our brine line flow control and it is held in with a clip. To make this easier to view, we have removed the assembly. We can begin by inspecting the O-ring that seals the body to the brine line flow control. If this is damaged, it will need to be replaced. For installation, we need to make sure that we would add silicone lubricant to ensure it seals tight to the body. We can then move forward to the plastic nut fitting. We can inspect the internals of the brine line flow control and check to make sure that the two-piece washer assembly is secure and there is no damage to it. We can also inspect the hose and as necessary remove the brass fitting and trim any hose back if there is damage to it. We can then reassemble the components and reinstall on the valve. We bring the assembly back into the body and press the clip in to engage. Good luck and thanks for watching.